Welcome to the shop. I'm continuing in Koala Production Run 4, getting close to the end of the 750 parts that I need to make. Today I'm in the manual lathe room, working on the last steel part that I need before I can send the batch off for anodizing and plating. I have a couple of more parts that I'm working on, but they don't need to be plated or anodized, but this is, this is the last part before I can send them out. So I've already cut the blanks out of one inch cold rolled rod, already cut the blanks to length on the chop saw, and now I'm gonna be drilling and ta facing, drilling and tapping some holes. Ooh, that sounds exciting. I'm using a combination of manual lathe and the Tormach rapid turn to make these parts. If I had a real CNC lathe, I'd just do it all on the CNC lathe, but the rapid turn, it just doesn't have an easy way to do drilling and tapping, and so I'm just going to do this on the manual lathe. Should go pretty fast. <laughs> The pieces were cut a little bit oversized, and this dimension is not even close to critical. So, well, let's see, I think I'll use a little tap magic on the, the drill bit. I'm using a stubby drill, a screw machine length drill, to avoid having to use a spotting drill or a center drill, and it drills pretty darn accurate. It centers itself up pretty well. I'm also doing a little bit of a interrupted cut by hand to get some chip breaking action. Then I'm going to switch over. I've got a, a chuck here that I can grab the chuck by hand and move it back and forth on, got a little bearing on this thing, and I find this is a, a reasonable solution for power tapping on the manual lathe that I can feel if, and then of course with this tap, it's a 5 16th tap, so I'm not really in danger of, of breaking the thing, but with smaller taps, I like being able to feel if it's binding and getting ready to break and then just let go immediately. So here goes. Using a fairly large tap drill, getting 60% thread, I don't need the full 75% thread on this guy. Um, it, the 60% in steel works just fine, and it makes it real easy to power tap holding it without having the piece jerk out of my hand. And So anyway, I'm going to run the batch of 10 pieces threaded on this side with the 5 sixteenths, then flip it around, do the other side uh, threaded uh, 1032, and then off to the rapid turn to turn the uh, little half inch part that goes in the bearings, then onto the mill to drill some perpendicular holes, and then out for plating and anodizing. Wow, nearing the end.
Well, back again, got all the 5 16 holes drilled and tapped. Back again, high speed. <laughs> Face off the other end. I like using a collet chuck more than a three jaw whenever I can. Still using the the short drill, the stubby drill, screw machine length drill. Stopping a little as I drill to get a bit of chip breaking. Pulls about five sixteenths deep. Switch over to low speed. Get my tapping chuck in place. Tap magic. Did I mention it'd be really cool to have a real CNC lathe? Wiggling a little by hand to get a little ship breaking action on the tap and be able to feel it and there it goes And for those who think that oh that looks really scary and dangerous. No, it's not the the chuck is round I have a very good sense of when the chuck starts to grab and all I have to do is just let go <laughs> Haven't broken a tap yet So there, let me get the, this collet chuck is so slow to use with a, with its chuck key that let me just keep my cordless drill nearby. I made up a little square drive for it and it's going to go into production on these, and then when these are done, it's off to the rapid turn. All of the manual lathe work is complete. The uh, facing is done, the holes are drilled and tapped, and now I'm moving over to the Tormach to use the rapid turn to turn down the one inch stock down to a little less than a half inch. I'm actually making it 496, which is four under, and that'll give plenty of space for the nickel chrome plating and uh, make it fit nicely into the bearing. It, it, because this is low speed operation, don't really care about having super balance. It doesn't have to be a fit within tenths. It just has to get on the bearing and the nickel chrome plating is a fairly heavy uh, thickness and so I need to make sure that I have sufficient clearance. Also, I apologize for the terrible lighting. I didn't look at the video until after, the, uh, after it was done and after there was no way that I could change it, but the, uh, the work light on the manual lathe just totally overpowers and blows out the camera and even with a little bit of uh, post-production dick and wit, uh, it, the video still looks terrible. So I got a light set up here to try to light the rapid turn a little better so it's a little more visible. Um, the rapid turn is an attachment for the Tormach, which I showed the complete detailed setup, including a lot of fumbling and stumbling and not remembering how to do it properly, I showed the complete setup in the, uh, in the previous video on the drive roller, the part number 111. So today the machine is set up, the zero has been set, uh, the diameter, the X uh, diameter has been set by machining a test piece and measuring with a micrometer. Tool path has been verified, so you don't get to watch me fumble and stumble and make mistakes. All you get to do is just watch the thing work perfectly and slowly. 
the Turmach rapid turn, especially when turning steel, is not very rigid, it's not very strong, it's not very powerful. Have to take small cuts and, oh well, you know, I can complain, but, and I do complain frequently, it's still, it is a CNC lathe. And it's a, it's a minimal CNC lathe, barely adequate, but makes my parts, makes my parts really, really nicely. So first thing, I stick the blank into the collet and leave it kind of loose. Then the tool actually, the tool tip actually forms my Z stop, so I run the part out until it hits the tool, then go over and tighten the collet, and be sure to remember to unlock the spindle lock, because forgetting that is not a good thing. Then start the cycle going to be using a very minimal amount, just dribbling the flood coolant and taking very light passes. Unfortunately, the carbide insert tooling really only does excellent chip breaking when you give it a kind of an aggressive feed. Let me turn the light on here. So I'm getting, I'm getting okay chip breaking. Um, the chips aren't totally big and stringy, so maybe I'll stop complaining and just watch the machine making a nice part. And yeah, I always imagine, wow, what would life be like if I had a, a Haas mini mill and a real CNC lathe? What could I do with those? Of course, the first problem is I'd have to fit them in this tiny little shop. So, Just continuing along, taking a very small depth of cut. I think I'm taking 50 thou per pass. Six thou per revolution feed rate. 1200 RPM, actually the, the rapid turn compensates, so it's actually programmed for surface feet per minute and it increases RPM as the part diameter is reduced, which is a kind of a cool thing, maintaining constant SFM. Slow, slow, slow. After I finish this part, I'm going to set up the bridge port so I'll have something to do while the Tormach is busy, and I'll be drilling the perpendicular holes on the bridge port. So let me go ahead and turn on the controller just to get a bit of a head start. Nice to have the bridge port available for manual part making, fixture making, 
second operation, third operation, fourth operation. Really nice to have a manual mill, partly CNC, two axis CNC, but it also has the option of complete manual operation. So it is now finishing off. It makes a tiny, I don't know if you can see it on the video, it makes a tiny, tiny little shoulder right there so that the bearing doesn't uh, bind and rub against this surface. If it was just a flat faced off surface, the bearing would bind and rub. So there's a little uh, 600 thousandths uh, by about 40 thousandths little uh, ledge for the bearing to, uh, to ride against. And let me do a little QC here. Four nine six three, so two. Four nine six two, so it's two tenths over. I can live with that. Um, you know, for for all of my complaints about this thing, it does make parts. Makes parts just fine. That's a perfectly acceptable part. So, I will turn off the camera, continue the run, get the bridge port set up, and then show some unbelievably exciting hole drilling. Bet you can't wait. I'm over at the bridge port now while the Tormach is busy turning, and I'm gonna drill some holes. I've got the zero set up at the standard place at the left rear corner, up against the uh, reference surface right here with the little stop, and already have I'm in position for the first hole gonna set Z0 and the first hole only goes halfway through this is a 1032 tap hole Using the larger size tap drill, I really only need 60% thread for the, for the work being done. I don't need a super heavy thread, and it just makes it easier to thread the, the steel. And then the second hole goes all the way through, so I'm pecking to avoid build up on the end. It's a fairly deep, small diameter hole, so just pecking away. Full speed, 4200 RPM, using a, a cobalt drill, high speed cobalt steel. Works really well. And there we have it. Holes! How exciting is that? Then the next operation will be a perpendicular hole, which has to be referenced properly to the right, the, to the correct side, so I need to be careful about that. And uh, I'll be back! Okay, got the two holes drilled. Now, got a a little fixture made up here that aligns the part thusly. I need to reference this perpendicular hole to that point, the back surface and this edge, and keep it perpendicular to the holes that were drilled in the last operation. So this little fixture should do the job. Go over here and on the network, load them up into position, quarter inch hole, about 2800 RPM, slowly tech drilling. with mist coolant as soon as it 
get going. the knee up a little bit. And there we have it. Got a little bit of deburring to do, but that finishes, or actually as soon as I finish drilling the entire run, but you know, th this concludes today's video, and after I get done with my deburring, I'm going to do a little inspection, probably do a dry fit of some of the parts just to make sure they all fit together nicely, count them all, make up a nice parts list for the anodizer, and then off to anodizing and plating. Then after that, I've got a, f a very few parts that don't need to be anodized and plated, but hey, coming near the end of the metalwork. And next thing I got to do is assemble the circuit boards. Uh, the surface mount assembly by hand under the microscope. And then once that's done and the parts come back from anodizing, I can build up units. So, progress continues. I'm nearing the end. Thanks for watching. It's been fun.